Hello everyone, it's Aaron here at Mecha Alliance and today is another unboxing and review videos um, of the Mecha figures. So, um, our guest today is a product from Sentinel International Limited, the Riobot R16, Nerf X Godzilla Battle Weapons Shiryu. So this is kind of like a crossover between Evangelions and Godzilla. So it's a Mecha Godzilla in, you know, like Evangelion style. Stop that one. So here we have a look at the box. This is how the figures look. And yeah, this, this is a real box. Logo, this is the 16 figure in the real bot lines. So here it says Godzilla vs. Uh, Evangelion. It has a, you know, like an outer box and an inner box as well. So that's, so that's, this is the outer box of it. And this is the box itself. Looking really good. So it has an open window as well to look inside in here. So it's the Mecha Godzilla um, painted in you know like Evangelion colors with uh, Nerf uh, logos and such. So from the windows you can see the figures, um, two arm blades. I think this is a replacement parts. Um, some extra hands for it, and you can see the base at the back of it. Well, without further ado, let's jump in and see. I was lucky enough to grab this figure at 12,000 yen um, on Hobby Link Japan sale. Why wow, its retail price is, you know, like way more. Uh, expensive. So let's open up and see the excitement inside. There we go. Ah, oh, yes. Uh. So here's the uh, instruction sheet. I like how, you know, like, uh, Sentinel always put the instruction sheet in a plastic uh, cover, which makes it, you know, the instruction, it's pretty short though, nothing much. So it shows how to detach hands, how to attach the blades, switch out the tails if you don't like the uh, Evangelion colored ones and some product image, how to attach the base, and other things. Yep, that's it for the instructions. Yeah, very short. So the figures comes in two trays. The first tray and the, the under tray is the base. Really big, this one is actually um, the bigger real pot size like the Shin Geta Robo or the Mazin Kaiser ones. Some other robots have, you know, like smaller base like uh, the Sugumori or the Delphin. They're smaller robots, so you got pretty small base. Let's open up this bad boy and see. some uh, protective bits and pieces over the spikes as well. I guess it's understandable because uh, these spikes sh 
looks pretty fragile so if it's not covered in the box it might uh, break here's the figures in all of its glory really nice paint job a great metallic finish so um, at first glance you can tell this is a slimmed down version of the Mecha Godzilla because it's uh, according to you know like Eva proportions and such so Eva is pretty much slim in the body uh, and it's got some paint good paint apps as well like on these spiky bits yeah these fade purple paints and these fade green paints so this reference to all the Eva, Eva 01 color and of course on the shoulders are the Nerf uh, logos on these two sides and Nerf slur really learned the lessons and make something good eh? <laughs> let's try and stand this thing up So the easiest way to you know balance this guy is for it to you know like rest on its tail like the whole body just rests on the tail pretty easily just like that let's take a look around the figure then Switch to this. So, at first, really nice paint job. Uh, really, especially the fade color effects. Uh, great color scheme as well. Uh, one thing uh, I really, I kind of surprised is how light the figure is. It's really light. It's at first when I held it. Barely felt like it got any die cast in there, even though it's in the real bot line. Um, so a few of the previous real bots also have, you know, like full plastic, no die cast material. But for the R16, I figure it should have a little bit more of a heft to it. But yeah, I don't feel it here. I don't. I'm not sure if it's got any die cast. I won't. I don't think it does. And when I held it, it doesn't really feel that heavy at all. So it might or might not have any die cast. So let's take a look at the articulation of this spiky boy. So first let's take a look at the head for this guy. It can move up and down pretty much easy. Oh, let's just pop up again. The uh, might need to move these spikes out of the way to you know like not obstruct the way you move the head. You can open up the mouth. It got a little bit of neck like neck action here first. Nothing much for side to side. So the whole. Th the whole next segment from here there's a ball joint down there which allows it to go up and down that's it pretty much it for the neck body can move side to side can crunch a little bit a great arcing, arcing back be but because of the uh, armor design, so it cannot crunch really well. So if, if this, this armor is not in the way, um, the crunch would have been better. Shoulder is on a um, Sentinel Universal joint. So it's really flexible, can move up quite a lot, move out quite a lot. 
course uh, rotation all the way through. Yep, pretty great range of movement. Uh, and a pivot here, full pivot around. The shoulders can move this much. It's not a double joint, which is a shame. But you know, um, Godzilla doesn't need to snap his arm in completely. So there's this joint at the wrist, can move like that. Then of course, uh, the rotate the ball joint at the base of the wrist right here. Which can pretty much do all the pose with the hands you need. Legs is on uh, similar joints with the uh, shoulder as well, so can kick up really, really far because it got no skirt armor. Kick back really, really far as well, almost on the way. And of course, move out. Move out, doesn't not much, so just just to here and a little bit of a pipe swivels pivot over here. Yeah, because of the uh, armor restrictions. So here's the legs, can move back like that, and there's another separate joint in the under the knee, so you can do this kind of chicken legs things. And uh, at the feet, as, as I shown before, you got a ball joint right here. So pretty much a great range of motion. And the small piece of spikes here can all move individually or throughout uh, the two legs. On the back, most of the big spikes can move especially the ones at the nearest on the spines part so this one can move this one can also move so those are on ball joints this one's also on ball joint this one can move this one can also move this one as well as this one so those are the spikes that can move now come to the tails. I think each one is a separate segment. So there's one segment, two segment, three, four, five, six, and seven. Although these last segments uh, movement range is not much, but it's enough to create some really, really nice uh, organic and dynamic tail poses. So that's a plus. It wouldn't be a proper Godzilla without a good tail. Oops. Let's take a look at the uh, accessories that it has. So first we got the two uh, blades, arm blades. Bit hard to get out. So you got two of these ones, and you can attach it facing forwards or facing backwards uh, under on the uh, forearms as well. Speedly, you just uh, need to block that straight in the arms here. And that will be how you you attach it backwards and forwards just do the same same principle but you know do the on the other way this one is a little bit harder to put in but there we go so you can go back 
uh, you can put it at the front or to the back. And a replacement tailpiece, just in case you don't like that color, you can swap it out. And replace it with this uh, normal color ones instead. Yeah, for me personally, it looks a little bit ridiculous, but I like this one more. And two others interchangeable hands. So this one, you just pop the other hands up and you know, like put it in on the ball joints. It's pretty much self-explanatory. So overall, this thing is a pretty good piece. Um, I wish it had a little bit more of a uh, uh, hips joints action because this one is a little bit uh, limited. But I mean, given how the figure is constructed, it shouldn't be uh, like a deal breaker for me. Should be able to you know hold all the normal Godzilla poses it's not like I'm gonna make it do kicking pose like that or martial art parts or anything so yeah it should be able to you know fulfill most of uh, what I had in mind for this figure <clears throat> so here we go also has quite um, you know like pretty unique uh, accessories or get your arm blades but I wish it could have a little bit more of uh, accessories that go with it like a uh, effect parts or something that resemble the lens of Longinus or something like that so overall this is worth um, this is for the price that I got it for 12,000 yen, this is pretty worth it. Um, I wish it has uh, die cast in it though, it may have, but I don't like, think I feel it. So yeah, uh, I'd say I recommend this figure if you can find it at around 10 to 12,000 yen, which is um, Hopping Japan sale. So I'll, I'll probably rate this 8 over 10. It would have been better if it has, you know, like die cast, a little bit more accessories, and the um, like the blades on the knees is not so not so easy to pop off. Overall, this is a good figures to play with. Just be careful with the all the spikes and you know like the parts, pointy parts as well. And that would be all for me. It is Aaron from Mega Line signing out.